So, there it is. There's George. You're you're muted currently, George. Your uh, your microphone is muted. Okay, sorry about that. And there you go. Ralph's trying to figure out the sound, so um, I'm going to unmute you in case you want to say anything, Ralph. And you hey, should Ralph, have. Yeah. You're responding to Ralph, Alexis? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Did, see that. Yeah. Like, huh. I've used Zoom before, but um, not where I was highly interactive. We did this wonderful personality profile thing in the class I took that was almost kind of like this class a little bit. Um, organization leadership of the church at messiah college and and he did the disc personality profile oh, and okay for, for myself in large groups i kind of clam up but if it's a small group like this i talk a lot <laughs> which i didn't know about myself and then i was like oh yeah definitely like okay you know, that's a big group i'm totally silent some of my wife's friends have actually asked like hey does andrew talk i've never <laughs> seen <him> talk <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, well, let's see. Well, Ralph's still figuring that out. So I want to, I don't know how much of the explanation of your question that you heard. Uh, uh, a little bit, minimal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, the question was you were highly interactive within your group, or not my response to your question, was you're highly interactive in your groups. So I wanted to kind of remove the requirement to be interactive in the main forum as well, because my initial thought was that's going to be way too much because we all have jobs and families and mm -hmm. things like that. We have to coordinate as well. So now that we're four weeks into it, would it be too much to be interactive within the main forum? I don't know. There's also the, uh, oh, Ralph's on twice now. Um, there's also like the, uh, we don't, I don't think we really mastered using the forum very well either. There's also a technology um, learning curve there. The group forum area? Yeah, like we, uh, Alexis set up a phone call through the place she works there. And so we've been doing phone calls, like um, conference calls. Oh, this would be okay. cool, set up a Zoom thing. Um, and so we've been using mm -hmm. that and, and then a Google Docs, which Alexis also set up. Uh, seems to be awesome. the technology person. Mm -hmm. um, well, now we're, we're sharing a screen, got it. I, so that has worked out really well for us. I'm not sure how to do the other part. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show just demonstrate really quickly because it is new so there there is going to be a little bit of growing pain there mm -hmm. so i'm going to set up and which group we're four or four okay so i'm going to show your stuff if that's okay so if anyone clicks there and they go to visit group homepage, there's a couple things on here that you may want to do and this first one conferences you can set up a uh, conference just like this right here oh. there you go yeah just by clicking add conference and then it's called the big blue button that's that's just the name that canvas gave it uh, okay. and then you could schedule it you know if you schedule it over 60 minutes you'll probably give everyone a headache yeah, <laughs> 60 minutes. So, uh, all you have to do is hit that, and then I can't see my screen here, and then just hit OK, and you can have a scheduled meeting conference, which can be a video, just like what we're doing, and then you could share screens, do things like that. And cool. here under collaborations, you can just hit add collaboration, and then name the and it'll make a Google Doc for you. Um, but of course, mine's moving kind of slow right now. But it's not intuitive because you have to actually have to click up there a name where it doesn't show a box. Uh, um, yeah. And then just hit submit. And then when you get that list, it gener what it does, it generates a Google Doc so any of us can see it. And you click it. Oh, cool. And there it is. It so advanced. <laughs> So advanced nowadays. 
<laughs> so, George, are you able to see, I think I resent you a link to view the, the Google folder that we were using that's separate from Canvas? Yes, I can see one, that. Okay, so you're able to see that now, because at one point, yes. okay, so that's good. That's, that's a cool function. I think that we didn't end up doing video conferencing because I want to say maybe Navila doesn't have access to like a video function. So is there an option for her to just like call in if the rest oh, of the okay. Good question. So what was the question at the end? Are is there a function where Navila would be able to use a phone call in rather than the video function? I'm assuming that would be fine. You know what? Let's set one up because I do not know the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so also, and would you prefer that we record it and then you can view it or is that optional? <laughs> You're putting a lot in George to watch everybody's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm easy. Just make sure that there's some, some sort of log. So I know, oh, okay, they had, well, I'll actually be able to see the log in the, in the collaboration. So it's, okay. you shouldn't have to do anything. It should okay. all be captured. Yeah. That's great. Am I supposed to be able to see your screen right now? Yes. Are you not? No. I can see George's computer screen. Lunch meeting. Oh, can I? Uh, my daughter. Oh, hey, Ralph's there. Hey, Ralph. Good to hear from you, man. Hello there. Oh, no. Hey, I... good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Got it. I guess there, my computer downloaded like an app for Zoom. So I was just on uh, like the uh, web browser and then you still showed up. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, my iPad Pro must already have an app for it. Unless I just used it or something. Yeah. Are, are, are we being iPad uh, snobbish today, Andrew? No. no <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. The conference. And so I'm not as familiar with the iPad. Okay, so Have you I'm... downloaded the Canvas app for your iPad? Oh, no, I didn't know there was one. Yeah, that's what I used in China. It was super helpful. I think it's called like student or something once you download it, but yeah. it's really, it's really helpful. I'll look for it, yeah. It is. It is extremely helpful. Uh, let's hit start and see what happens. Do -do. It's doing something. And it may not let me do it because I'm using the camera with Zoom, so we'll see. Right, you're already using something. Hey, Alexis? Yeah. Did you, because I'm, I'm using a, a work computer and I'm not allowed to use, unless it's a corporate function, I'm not allowed to use the camera on my laptop. <laughs> did, you, did you say you, did you say you used an iPad? Andrew is using an iPad. Yeah, I'm using an iPad right now. Okay. Did you say there was some kind of special option or some kind of special direction to get on there? She said there's an app, which I think I well, might be. The app is for Canvas, but I think Andrew's using like Zoom. Maybe did you just copy paste the link into the browser, Andrew? Hey. Well, maybe I'm using the browser. I don't know. I just clicked on the link and it opened up. But I know my wife has oh, right. yeah. before, so I assume it's on the on the tablet here. I don't. I used to be the tech guy, and as soon as we switched over to Apple products, I became uninterested because over there. you can't do anything with them other than what they do. So here's what it looks like when you sign in. So oh, does okay. she have? Uh, Microphone access? We'd have to ask. I'm not sure if she does. Because I'm not seeing where it says uh, where it give, gives an option to call in. George, this is totally off topic, and my wife would yell at me right now, but your house looks super cool and like old and stuff. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it is old. Style. Uh, <laughs> Sun porch back there? Yeah, what we did was uh, we have uh, a big port, so I enclosed it with, uh, I forget what the name of it, but it's a 
clear plastic, but it's really strong, so it won't break. And uh, put a pool. T- we have teenagers now, so uh, okay. there's a there's a pool table, big screen TV, a swamp cooler, and and a wood stove for the winter, so teenagers cool. can enjoy the house. Yeah, we wanted it. So, yeah. Where do you live? What city? Uh, Apple Valley. Mm. Apple Valley. Okay. Yeah, we got a couple horses and things like that to just enjoy the the outdoors around here. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully a place where, you know, because teens don't have a lot of places to congregate. So that was our, we were very purposeful in that to, to help. That's, that's great. That's cool. Let's see. Yeah. So ask if she's got uh, microphone access. Okay. And that conferences looks like it'll work because uh, it that doesn't have to have video. That's great. I'm Perfect. glad you showed us that. I did not see that beforehand. So, George, the other part of my question was more academic in that the, um, <laughs> the, um, uh, the syllabus lists off like, okay, pick out these three bullet points and talk about them. And that's kind of what we've done. Right. But the top part of the thing just asks really great questions to get the conversation going. Um, so we were all like discussing in their group which most of us are here in the group. And, okay. and we're like, um, well, what do we do? What does he want us to do exactly? Yes, yeah, so like, are you expecting us to answer those questions in our forum post or just as like conversation starter amongst our group? And then we kind of like summarize that in notes from like our phone meeting. For the group discussion, uh, exactly what you just said. Uh, use them as conversation starters because each week has a topic. Mm-hmm. And like, let's let's jump in for people who aren't don't have the context of being here. Let's get uh, specific for this week's if we can. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. So we're on group leadership, right? First, first off, make sure I'm in the right week. <laughs> uh, so we go to uh, the week four discussion. Is that what we're talking about? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm answering the question correctly. So you'll probably hear me ask a few questions at that as well. Okay, so now uh, we're looking at the mixed company textbook. And then this one, we just want to look at the three most important concepts that we've learned. So now the questions, are they the ones in the group discussion forum instructions or? Under group up here? Okay. So once you do it, these are just, you, you want to answer what is your leadership preference. And if I can't talk about that one, we all have a go-to where, where we tend, think about a time where you were under high stress. If you ever want to know where your go-to is, put yourself under immense stress and that's your go-to. <laughs> because <laughs> you, you will do <laughs> wherever your, your go-to is. It, it, automatically happens under great stress. So uh, uh, if you ever want to, def- if you're not sure and you want to define it, put yourself under stress and it will be there. <laughs> so, but so the- or flight, but- what's that? So fight or flight basically. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, literally. So, <laughs> the proverbial throwing someone into the deep end to see if they can swim. Uh, they will they will know the type of swimmer they are within a matter of seconds. Uh, <laughs> uh, same yep. thing with le- leadership style. Now the nice thing is is that with our leadership style preference, the assessment in chapter six, we don't have to throw ourselves into that deep end to find out what our style is. So we will know when times of extreme stress happen what, what how we're going to default. I like to call that our our default. That's where we're going to go. Uh, some people under extreme stress, they just start giving orders. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> do, this, do this, do this, right? Uh, while others, uh, even your most uh, collaborative folks, you tend to see what they do. They might start relying on people more. So just this is just to know your uh, leadership style preference or where you naturally gravitate to because they're all on a continuum. We all operate in these different spaces according to the needs of our employees. So 
whatever they need. Some people need me to be very autocratic and tell them very black and white what to do, what not to do. And some people need me more as a coach, which I'm a little more comfortable with. The coaching style where you give them, uh, you coach them towards something and let them actually practice to get better. That's a hard part for some people. They don't like to let people get the practical experience slash practice to get good because I don't think any of us were good at anything in that initial, you know, start. No, no, it was a baseball player. So the great, well, we were, we all started as rookies. I forget who made that comment, that, quote but it's very true and that's part about growing people as a leader that we really really have to connect with is that the first time even if you're coaching them really well they, they have to stumble and fall and it's okay to let people stumble and fall because that helps them figure it out so that, that's my diatribe for the afternoon and then back to your question now that I showed you my ADD coming out uh, after you complete it, uh, how has this preference been evidenced in previous group settings? So the group settings that you have to answer are uh, at work. You can plug in the group settings here in class as well, because some people just kind of naturally take over. Some people are more comfortable with the area of helping things along, doing different stuff different things within the group. They like to be active, building, making, doing sort of things while others more like to coordinate, things like that. So just show how your leadership style has shown itself in other group settings. A follow-up question on that. When it says identify your primary and secondary style preferences, so does that mean because in the actual assessment, there's only two options. You're on the continuum of either participative or uh, directive, I think. And uh, so as secondary, would we then default to the only other option or does that expand and start to include situational leadership, servant leadership and those options? Expand into the larger options that you just okay. mentioned, servant leadership situational leadership. So I'm gonna ask you a question and as, as we go. So here's my, I didn't make the PowerPoints that are in the class, otherwise it would be more like this. Uh, what's your <laughs> definition of leadership? So what, what is leadership? How do we know when someone's in charge? I think it's a person who has influence over other people and they are united with a common goal or purpose or function. So the leader is influencing the group to achieve that purpose. Oh, nice. I like uh, that a lot. <laughs> we're just gonna piggyback on that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Ralph, you got anything to add to that one? I think uh, leadership, um, for the most part, uh, is um, defined by, I would say is defined by um, stressful situations or by chaos per se. Uh, true leadership anyway is defined, you know, the, the, kind of, the kind of leadership that's going to be um, successful, I guess, long-term is gonna be based on that. It's gonna be based on uh, how, how the leadership, uh, how the leader uh, acts under pressure. Like you said, your, your true, your true leadership personality comes out under duress. Yeah, absolutely. And so I would agree with totally 100% with what Alexis says, but I think I think that would be the first layer of true leadership, and then the rest is going to be based on how they react or adapt to various situations. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I, I feel like um, just when I observe things through life, depending on the context of the situation you're in, uh, you know, leadership looks a little different. Uh, I'll take my brother as an example. He's older than I am. And so I always followed him. But I found when we got older that if it was just like a normal everyday situation, he just kind of does things and people follow him. He was natural leaders. Um, doesn't always work out the best in like a small group setting. 
Uh, but he just starts moving and people just follow him naturally. I start moving and people don't follow me. <laughs> it's a natural thing for some, for some circumstances in life. And then I think in like a more formal role, like in a, in a meeting at a business, it ends up being a lot like the textbook is talking about where it's, uh, there's a process and the, and the leader kind of emerges and it doesn't have as much to do with the personality or the natural giftings of the person and the kind of thing. Right. So since we're talking, go ahead, Ralph. No, I was just going to say is that I totally agree uh, with Andrew in that I have a brother who's my older brother as well. He 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 seems to have this uh, uh, this personality where you know he he doesn't have the highest education, but he seems to succeed in everything that he does, and that everybody who everybody who listens to him or that that you know hear him speak. Or, you know, gravitate to him, you know, whereas, uh, you know, I, I kind of question in, in some of the literature that I've read is that some, you know, leaders are not born, they're made. And I tend to disagree, you know, 70% of that is, is untrue based on what I've learned in life, my life experiences in the various leaders that I've, I've worked for, or the type of leadership that I want, leader I want to become. So uh, with that being said, uh, you know, Andrew and I must have the same brother because uh, <laughs> my brother, my brother seems to, you know, again, like I said, he, in everything he does, he, he tends to uh, be able to to succeed and people follow him. And like Andrew said, I, I tend to speak sometimes, and I think people are following him. And I turn around, there's no one behind me. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, so, uh, you know, my question, you know, and I haven't had a chance to really bring this question up, but uh, George, do you think that leaders are made or do you think they're born or, or maybe, a, maybe a combination of both? I, I kind of believe there's a combination in there somewhere. That's a great uh, question. And, and I'll tell you uh, from my experience and personal preference as well, I think it's a hybrid of that because when I, I heard that too, a lot of our uh, uh, ODs were, uh, Lockheed would try to say, leaders are made, not born. And that's not completely true. I don't know what percentage Ralph is on that 70% uh, line. So it sounds like you kind of gravitate to the traits theory of leadership. But I will guarantee right. you that there are innate parts that are born into people to lead. Absolutely. Now, it's, that's almost like a nature versus nurture question. Yeah. Because right. now, right. If, if we nurture these, can they become that leader? Mm. That, that's kind of the question that we have to ask. And that's where the, what happened with the comment about people saying learners are uh, made, not born, is they're looking at the uh, nurture piece a lot more than nature, and they think that they can affect the natural piece there by giving different, uh, you know, different perspectives, different uh, focus on their traits that make a good leader. But with that said, you're not going to be Steve Jobs, uh, uh, yeah. Tesla, Who, who's the leader of Tesla? Oh my goodness. Elon Musk. Musk. Thank you. Elon. Musk. Yeah. You're not going to be those folks by being trained to lead. Right. You know, they're there. What I like to say is, because I, I think of emergencies a lot, you know, uh, stressful situations. Uh, when there's a stressful situation, if you're in a, a room with a large number of people and if something very stressful is happening, wherever their eyes shift to, that's the leader in the room. You may have a, a person who was directed to be the leader and given that by appointment, but when there's major stress, like something is completely breaking down in the manufacturing process, whatever it may be, where those eyes shift, that's the leader right there. You can see that in families, uh, mm -hmm. business, uh, just groups anywhere, and, and that's because this might sound odd, but I think people can feel those natural traits who have mm -hmm. them exemplified, you know, because they're going to be like, okay, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah. So I totally agree. 
Yeah. So know this, if you're in that room, in that meeting, and you're not looking at anybody else, that means everybody's looking at you. Yeah. So take mm -hmm. on that role. Take that role on. Because you don't have to be the, uh, the mandated leader. You can be that, uh, oh, there's many different terms for the, the actual leader who is not uh, directed to be the leader, is not given it by a position, not the positional leader. But use that to a large advantage to create more team cohesion and to create uh, a better sense of, of uh, focus on the vision, mission, vision, values of whatever the project may be. Because I would imagine just by talking to you all that you've been in that situation where you were that person. You know, I don't know for a fact, but I can imagine. I think it's also interesting because the fact of like leaders being born versus made in the context of like introversion versus extroversion because naturally when you think of a leader you might think of someone who's extroverted or has that charisma and confidence even the book said that in the process of elimination quiet people are eliminated first which I was a little offended by because I, I identify as an introvert and definitely in initial stages I, I like to kind of see check the horizons and kind of like acclimate and like okay. listen first and so I'm also listening to a book right now called Quiet and uh, it's the what is it Quiet the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking <laughs> and I don't know if you guys have heard of it <laughs> yes and, I love that but it's been a really good and deconstructive book because she's making the argument that introverts, not all introverts want to be leaders. So that is kind of part of a nature and possibly nurture thing where they just don't want to be leaders. But there are introverts who can be very powerful leaders. Even like Bill Gates is considered an introvert and he's a really good leader. Right. And so it's interesting to think, what she says is that like an introvert might disqualify themselves from leadership because they don't exhibit those characteristics of extroversion, charismatic, talkative, things like that. But there's times where introverts make a, a better leader because of their ability to uh, analyze information or listen, be empathetic, things like that. And then also there's times where she actually did a really strong analysis on the Harvard School of Business, which was really crazy because you always think of that as being one of the top business places in the world. And right. they very much foster an environment for extroversion where you always need to be talking. You need to have an idea, even if it's maybe not the most uh, well-informed, but you need to be confident about saying it and encouraging people to follow you. And there's a lot of like group think that happens. And a lot of times where the ideas are just bad, but because they sound really good, uh, people fall along with it and how that can actually be like usually the most talkative person ends up being the leader but that's not always a good leader <laughs> so I thought that was really interesting too is that maybe you're born an introvert and might be predispositioned to be less of a leader but if you can harness your talents that are just different and apply them to specific contexts you can be a good leader and can I piggyback on top of that mm -hmm. is uh, a quiet leader that's also known as a transformational leader. Hmm. So all the talk now is about transformational leadership and they're also known as the quiet leader. Hmm. So there, I think there's, we're beginning to see a bit of a sea change with that, at least I hope, because it's very obnoxious following the loudest person in the room when they <laughs> don't have a good idea, right? Uh -huh. it is, it's hard. I agree. Oh, yeah. I agree. So that transformational leader is now known also as the quiet leader where characteristics such as listening well, uh, speaking, the proverbial speaking softly with carrying a big stick. No, the proverbial <laughs> listening well and processing that information and saying little but making it meaningful is what's making a big splash right now, a big hit. It reminds me of a time there was, uh, we were trying to uh, do some work with uh, testing, job, job checks, job testing that we were doing, that we had created. 
and we needed to analyze and make sure we weren't uh, breaking any federal laws. So we hired a consultant company to come in and Dan Kwong, he's still a good friend of mine now, but he was one of the consultants and he would sit there and he was very introverted and he would just sit quietly, listen to everybody, everything's going on. But when he spoke, you could hear a pin drop in the room because everybody knew that it, A, it was going to be very deep and meaningful. It, it wasn't just going to be noise. And B, he had listened to everyone, asked questions, and you could tell that whatever he was going to say, you needed to hear. <laughs> so whenever Dan spoke, the whole room would just get quiet, whereas when the other folks would speak, there'd be a lot of chatter. You know, but when Dan would put his point forward, it would just be, everybody would just kind of lean in. And, and physically, you could see him lean in. I was like, oh, okay. That was interesting. So that introverted leader can be very powerful because of those traits, because what they say is deep, it's meaningful, and it matters. Whereas, awesome. you know, some folks, we've all had them <laughs> as leaders at some time. They're, they just make a lot of noise. So even if you're like me who likes to make a lot of noise, uh, we need to slow down, stop, uh, listen, and then lean on other people to help us be more meaningful with the noise that we're generating, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm a, hey George, do you think? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Ralph. So, do you do you think? Because uh, I'm in agreement with you in terms of the transformational leadership, and um, and do you think that there is a, a like not every style of management per se are going to fit every situation? In other words, you can have a transformational, quiet leader type leadership style but maybe that wouldn't fit in a loud sales environment, as an example. Do you think that in some cases, uh, leadership styles have to, you know, if you're hiring a leader for an organization, do you, do you take into consideration the type of management leadership style, or do you think it's one style fits all? So in this case, transformational would fit into pretty much any type. I mean, how, how do you, how do you see how those type of leadership styles, I mean, is it a, one, one size fits all, or do you really need to evaluate the types of styles and the types of environment you're going to be, you're going to be putting them in? That's an excellent question, and uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt, my answer is no, there is not a one size fits all. Uh, that's my uh, perspective from experience and everything else is that one size does not fit all. You can have a leader, and this is where stress comes in as a leader. If you're leading an organization and they need something like, remember in the beginning I said we kind of have to go along our continuum for uh, autocratic to democratic all the way. Uh, we have to be able to move along that continuum. But your sweet spot or your, your go-to, your default, as I like to call it, has to fit that organization because that's where you're going to be most of the time. And... You can put any leader into a leadership position and they can lead. The question is, will it be successful and how will you measure the success is, is the critical piece right there. So in a large sales organization where they need uh, a, a louder leader, the, the L squared louder leader type of person, you may need that. Uh, extrovert. Now with me saying that, introvert, extrovert, we can both operate within the other's continuum. Mm. That, that's, just, that's, that's just a given. We can train ourselves to operate. I can actually train myself to keep quiet. You know, hey, <laughs> I've had to do that from time to time, right? Uh, and it's helped me very well to learn how to listen. Uh, but it's hard when we're working outside of our, of our comfort zone, outside of our continuum. Because when we're outside of that, if let's say I'm an extrovert, I'm working with a bunch of uh, uh, loud sales folks, I'm being a sales leader. I'm, after I'm done operating in that extroverted space, 
I need to do something for myself, either when I go home, the drive home or whatever, to transition back into my comfortable space. Otherwise, I will be stressed out immensely and ineffective as a leader as well. So that's why I think it's important that the leader fits the situation. They do. What are some other thoughts on that? Anybody? Does anybody think leaders can just jump into any spot or should it be situation? I'm uh, writing this down, transformation of leadership. But I hadn't really heard it before. And I'm like, oh, I do that naturally. I'm yeah. quiet and I think about everything and then I offer up information at the end. Um, so I did ropes course. Did uh, you break anything? <laughs> no. Okay. So I, did a, I was a ropes course facilitator at camp for a couple of years. And what I noticed nice. was uh, we take the same group of kids or, or college-aged uh, leaders through different types of uh, apparatus. And depending on the kind of challenge there was, um, different people in the group would emerge as the leader. Yeah. And the that was, yeah. Well, there's the perfect example of situational leadership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, it, um, if it's something that's very technical, that you have to come up with strategies, things like that, mm -hmm. some people are better at it. You know? mm -hmm. If it's uh, just a wild uh, cliff jump, you know, some people are yes. better than that than others. Yes, right? definitely. And we need them all. They're all valuable. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. The biggest tool that you can have as a leader, if you're a leader of this group, is to be able to identify those folks. Like my, my role was I was a risk taker in uh, learning and development. If there was something that was uh, needed to happen and it wasn't done that much before, or wasn't done before, and it needed somebody to uh, just take a chance, that was just when I was the lead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Out there. Did you remember your shoot? Uh, okay. <laughs> if we didn't, it's going to be a hard landing. But uh, yeah, that. And so, as a leader, if we identify those folks, uh, we know who we can rely on to be our secondary leader there, if you will. Mm -hmm. And those folks are important. And that brings us to uh, communication. So. Uh, Let's talk about the uncomfortable communication as a leader. You have to be able to have uncomfortable discussions and you even have to be able to hear uncomfortable things. Yeah. And like, uh, I'm sure it wasn't easy for you to tell me about the, the syllabus and the requirements that kind of weren't really clear. Uh -huh. you know? I, I hope we have a good enough relationship in the four weeks that you know, it wasn't a big deal, but I'm sure it wasn't the, you didn't wake up wanting to do that. <laughs> uh, so we we have to establish relationships within our team where we can have that open communication and talk about those hard conversations um, where and this is where introverts I think may have the edge is in these conversations because you're going to process it and then and tell me if it's wrong, Alexis. Is you're and you're going to introvert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then uh, you're going to match it with the outcome that you want, and see how it gets there the best way, and then proceed with communication. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Like a good comparison of that is like my husband's like very extroverted, so if he needs to have a hard communication he just like dives right in and is very direct and honest and um which can work in some cases and in other cases it kind of takes people aback and they're kind of uh yeah shocked by that but he's good at like quick resolution whereas for me i'm definitely the opposite i will process it for probably way too long probably avoid talking about it for a little bit because i want <laughs> to um just do it the right way and i'm really nervous as well but then once it actually comes to that point, it ends up being like a very intentional conversation. Yeah, and, and it's gonna be uh, deep. And if those relationships, so now I'm gonna switch that to a team at work. If those relationships are built, 
that's going to be a very powerful conversation as well. It's going to be growing for everybody that's involved. If it's not, if those relationships aren't built, uh, it's not going to end up well at all, right? It's going to, some the other person on the other end, no matter how well you approach it, they're going to feel attacked or uh, they're, they're going to act in a way that is just very uncomfortable for the meeting. And as a leader, do we have to be willing to accept feedback from our employees? And should we have a relationship that, um, it's a word I'm looking for, a relationship that kind of fosters that sort of feedback to us? Should we do that or should we not do that? Well, I, I can speak from experience in terms of uh, being what's called a 360, um, which is uh, an evaluation or feedback from not only your peers and not only the people above you, uh, I also get a 360 uh, evaluation from my staff. And uh, it's, I get that done twice a year, once at the beginning of the year and once towards the end of the year. And uh, it's really, I'll tell you what, it's a very humbling experience to, to see, and it's all anonymous, so there's no, there's nobody getting their names pulled out um, and, and you're being told who they are. I get this 360, like I said, twice a year. It's part of the, uh, part of the leadership program of the company I work for. And it, I tell you, sometimes some of the similar feedback I get is hard to, it's really hard to hear or hard to see and or hard to imagine since I am perfect and I walk on water. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, and, and I'm a lot, uh, I'm a legend in my own mind, but the uh, the feedback I've received has really changed how I lead or my changed, changed my style in terms of the communication I give my, okay. my staff, as, as well as the interactions I have with my peers. Um, obviously, my supervisor is going to have a number of uh, areas for me to improve on, you know, based on, you know, uh, annual review processes and that sort of thing. But, mm -hmm. but what really interests me is my, uh, evaluation from my peers and my staff how they perceive me as a leader how i can you know they give me uh, uh suggestions uh and my communication with my peers was probably the most um interesting to me uh in that they they perceive me they perceive me some of them perceive me in a way that i had no you know looking in the mirror i i never thought that that was the perception i was giving them and so uh you know feedback is important uh, not it's a feedback just just in the way that you're, that you're given the feedback can be interpreted in a variety of ways and some people when I first started doing that, I've been with the company seven years and so I initially kind of didn't well obviously I didn't no one really likes the truth per se uh, but I think I think I, I've, I've learned to really uh, look forward to these evaluations to see how I've improved uh, and to see that I've actually you know changed the perception uh, of how people uh, or the either my staff or my peers look at me and my style of management. So, but again, to your point, uh, George, it's you know, some of this communication can be difficult to hear. Uh, I tend to be one that likes to rip the bandaid off immediately. Uh, I don't like to sugarcoat things. I don't like to think, I don't like to let things faster because that tends to make things worse. So, uh, but, you know, and that was part of the critique is that they said they said I was too um, I could be kind of abrasive when it, when it, in terms of communication style because again I don't like to sugarcoat things and I just come right at it hey you know this is where we are and and uh, this is the, you know I, I I bring this I bring a solution to the table uh, but again it's kind of softened my my approach I believe uh, receiving the the 360 communication back. But again, it, it takes me some time to digest some of this stuff. Right. Um, and uh, I'll have a I'll have a class of uh, alcohol to kind of keep my stomach down after I read some of this stuff. But anyway, <laughs> have you all heard of uh, J the Jahari window, Joe and Harry's window? No. Oh, okay. Let me jump real quick. I'm, it's uh, it pertains. It's not a rabbit trail. Don't worry. Uh, so you see an old school window where it's the four four window pane. Mm. Yeah, you have the like top the, left. What's that? Behind you right now. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, the first window pane is you see it and I see it, so it's visible to the world. Oh. And we're talking about our internal 
traits what would and then the second one or that'd be the bottom one and the second one would be uh you see it uh well you see it i see it i see it you don't see it so it's something that i kind of try to keep hidden a little bit you know it's a trait that i may or may not like so i cover it i don't use it and the third one is you see it i don't see it and that's where that 360 comes in really well is mm-hmm. because there's a lot of stuff that we simply don't see about ourselves, but other people do. And a 360 tool is one way to be able to get a peek into that, that window pane. You know, we never get a full view of it because everybody's always going to, even if it's anonymous, they're going to paint it in a certain way coming from all of their previous experience. You know, but that gives us a look into it. Then the fourth pain is you don't see it, I don't see it. It may come out under an extreme stress. And then then it comes out and then you do see it so it's no longer in that window pane anymore. And then you get to actually choose if you want the world to see it or like, oh man, I don't like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna bury that somewhere. You know, (laughs) it's that kind of thing. So the different communication tools like the 360 or assessment tools give us a look into what others see but we don't see. You know, because we do tend to see ourselves in a pretty good light for the most part, because we're trying to do good stuff. We're we're not we're not setting out to do stuff media uh, mediocre. Me- mediocrity is not our goal. And I haven't met a grad student yet who was mediocre. <laughs> you know, that is never the goal to be to be okay. You know, that's never never the goal of a grad student, right? Uh, so Joe and Harry's yeah. window, very important stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so communication, we're running low on time. My apologies. Um, leadership style, we have hit on leadership style very well as far as uh, different types and moving along that continuum and how it is. Let's, if I may. So flight flight ninety three. I just watched it. Yeah, that was pretty cool, huh? Uh, lack of leadership. So instead of talking about it specifically for flight ninety three, we've seen lack of leadership in a number of areas. Probably experienced it uh, for ourselves. What tends to happen if there's if everybody looks at that person as a leader and they don't respond in a way, in a in, if they don't take that on. If they don't take responsibility for that, what what are some things that can happen in normal business routine? I think there would be confusion, frustration, no direction, no progress. It would just kind of be in this like awkward limbo. Maybe some people start to initiate things on their own, but it's just not a cohesive effort. Yeah. So everything. Because the, for me, the biggest piece of leading is to everybody to see the end goal. Mm-hmm. And then there may be different ways of getting there, but the important thing is we get there and mm-hmm. we get there together. So you're right. It could be complete chaos. All of a sudden, multiple goals start showing up so nobody knows where to aim. <laughs> and that, and that, that's complete chaos all the time, every time, when there's a lack of leadership. And from our perspective, uh, as Christians, what if we don't take that responsibility when we're supposed to? I mean, that's kind of a big deal, right? I mean, we, we could look in so many places where it, how we react to that, if we're the ones that are that leader, how we react to not taking that position uh, speaks to us. And it also speaks to our faith and everything else, because even if we don't know how to do something or aren't comfortable with taking on a role, you know, we take it on and it's going to be all right. We're going to survive. We're going to, we're going to wake up the next day. We're going to keep going no matter what problems occur. So it kind of speaks to our willingness to problem solve. Has anybody gone a day without a problem to solve? That's all I want to know. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, is that a more question? Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the biggest deal, being able to think on our feet. But as a leader, 
if we can trust the people because building trust within our group, to me, that's the biggest thing, whether it's a sports team, a business team, a family, but trust is that biggest thing because that's what um, springboards all the other traits that have that. So if you know how to build trust within your team, uh, you're golden. You, you have a team that's going to succeed whether you're there or not there because the, the true uh, test of a team is how they act when you're not there. So and with that said. That's true. That is, yeah. that is very true, George. Yeah, so if they're all focused and there's that trust, and, and they know that you trust them, it's not just some leadership style that we're doing, it's, it's genuine trust, then you know what? They're going to perform well. They're going to do um, everything. It may not be perfect, but last time I checked, uh, Ralph was the only one that did everything perfectly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't let me run your organization. <laughs> well, you, you know, I know, I know, our, I know, our time is short. I just had, I just, I wanted to just follow up on what you said, George. Is that, you know, I, I, you know, I've gone through a progression through my career in terms of leadership, and I've tried to emulate a number of styles. You know, so uh, it, it, during that kind of like trying on session, I, what I've learned that has really made an impact on the uh, my, my style now over the years is really uh, one word and that's empowerment you know uh, what I've learned is is that for one I don't work well uh, working with micromanagers mm. uh, I, I have never worked well with micromanagers I mean that's going back to when I was a waiter at mom big boy way back in the day you know so it's just never been my style so I, I've, I've changed my style accordingly but what I've learned is, is that people respond, you know, cause a lot of times people, uh, leaders, we tend to underestimate, uh, for the most part, we tend to un underestimate not only the focus of our employees, but their ability to do their jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, so what happens is, is that we, we, you know, I believe in hiring the right people and getting out of their way, letting them do their jobs. So yeah. I think if I can, if I can just, uh, you know, again, touch on what you said, I think empowerment, what you said, when I go on vacation, I have two assistants that I know uh, are going to do the, the best that they possibly can based on our relationship and based on the, the uh, standards and the accountability factor. But again, it's their decision. I let them make the mistakes you know, uh, and let them learn from the mistakes. But my expectation is not to, uh, for them not to have those same type of, ex uh, or should say those right. same type of mistakes shouldn't be something that's going to be reoccurring. Uh, and again, it goes back to what you say in regards of trust, because I think trust is kind of a vague, uh, I guess, expectation. You know, for me, it's it's trust on top of accountability, which is what is I think accountability is a is a, is a byproduct of trust uh, per se. But again, the the empowerment is going to be the key uh, to any successful to me anyway. Uh, a leadership uh, letting your people do what they're hired to do and then getting out of their way. Right. And on that note, I'm plugging in. That's why you saw me moving. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, I almost died. Uh, thanks for that, Ralph. I appreciate it. I do. Um, and I'll close with one last comment of to be a, uh, the best leader you can be, just be your authentic self. So, and part of the assessment that we did this week is to really be able to dive in and look inside and see who that authentic self is with your leadership style and everything else. Because with all the noise that we've talked about that happens in the world today, there's a lot of noise on what we should be, what we shouldn't be, how we should, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's what it kind of sounds like after a while. But the best leader that you can be is the style that fits you, and that's your authentic self. And that's what this course is meant to kind of uh, – help you discover, or if you already know who that is, help to cement that in even further. Because if you are the uh, introverted transformational leader, then be that leader, you know, be that person. You can work in that continuum because people need it, but just be that authentic self with your uh, leadership style and everything else, and you will be successful. And people will appreciate it too, because we always know who's, Lying isn't the right word, but who's pretending, you know, 
you can feel it because we all know when something's authentic or not, right? I mean, mm-hmm. if, if you have a leader that's pretending to be transformational, but they're really not, you know it right off the bat. So just be your authentic self and continue these assessments that help guide you to define uh, your style because that, that's probably the best style out there is your style. That one. So I've taken up all your time, so I apologize for that. Uh, we're going to do these every week. Uh, it'd be great to see you again. Um, so just let me know, I'm going to put this up in an announcement and just let everybody know if it was worth it, not worth it, waste your hour, not waste, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, my feelings don't get hurt. I use all the feedback for growth, you know, so, uh, and that's why I started this session was because some of the feedback is usually discussions are more active, but in this class, they really aren't. So that's why I implemented this because of feedback. It's a, it's a great tool to have. So I appreciate you all. Any final comments before we check out? I have a quick question about last week's quiz. So I know I had uh, texted you about possibly oh. being an error of it showing like chapters five and six. And then I noticed that we didn't have one for this week. So I wasn't sure. You know what's happened with the quizzes? I didn't write the quizzes. They came from the uh, publisher. Mm. And then since they came from the publisher, I had some help putting them into the class. And they didn't put them in correctly. (laughs) And and that gave us all fits because I just assumed uh, that they were correct. So I'm having to go back and go through each one. Okay. Point by point. So it's been a bit of a, quizzes have been a struggle. Yeah. So, and the ones like I'll go through the quiz last week and any questions that were outside of the chapter, we'll just count them as correct okay. regardless of the answer. So that way it won't mess up the grading scheme or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Correct. So we'll, I'll have week next week set up, but it takes a little while to go through all of them. Like that. Got it. Because it pulls from a pool of like a hundred and some questions. So mm-hmm. you, you see, uh, 15 and 15, but it's actually a pool of uh, 230. Got it. Uh, so okay. that's why I've been like, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's why they've been a bit of a struggle, not just a real quick fix. Got it. Yeah. All right. So have a fantastic week, and I look forward to seeing uh, your discussions. Well, thank you. That's All right, great, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hey guys. I don't know if I know how to leave. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw everybody out. I'll hit in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this.